You are welcome to Growing in Christ podcast. My name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. And in this episode, I am sharing on modest dressing. What exactly is modest dressing? In the New Covenant, we do not focus on externalities. We focus on the heart. Not because the external is not important, but because when the inner heart is correct, the outer also will be correct. That also means that when the outer is wrong, it's an indication that something is wrong with the heart. And so what I'm dealing with is actually the heart of the believers. Even though it looks like we are talking about dressing, we are not going to prescribe any form of dressing to anybody. But we are discussing about the correct heart that dresses correctly. And we are addressing this because the scripture addresses it. It's quite unfortunate today that we are raising believers that have no sense of dressing, that do not have an understanding of how they are supposed to present uh, their body. And this cut across the two genders, male and female. It's a real serious problem in our generation. And so we need to look at the scripture and see what exactly does the scripture says about it. Now, we are going to be reading from the book of 1 Timothy. Many of you may be familiar with this passage, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and in particular, verse 9. Now, it says, In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing. Verse 10, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. The first thing I want to point out here is that the scripture says in like manner also that the women. So if I'm placing emphasis on the women, it is not because I want to place emphasis on the women. It is because the scripture places emphasis on women. It shows that whether we like it or not, the particular gender that have the greater problem with the issue of dressing are women. Whether we accept it or not, that is the truth. That is what the scripture teaches. This is not discrimination. This is not being gender biased. That is exactly what the scripture says. And it's so easy to understand that because God deliberately made the woman to be sexually attractive. God created her body to be so delicate and wonderful, far, far, far more than the body of the man. The man may have the strength, but the body of the woman carries so much grace and beauty. And so there is an emphasis on women. It says specifically women. Now, you see, it didn't go as far as telling the woman what to wear. Whether it is this style of clothing, it is that style of clothing. Now, let me say this before I move on. I already made a video where I address the issue of uh, type of clothing. Can a Christian woman wear trousers? I've addressed it and I've explained clearly that it's not trousers. God never said anything about trousers in the scripture. Trousers is a recent uh, style of clothing. Uh, and God is not dealing with trousers. We've explained that the issue of makeup, the issue of wearing earring, can you wear <coughs> Uh, braided hair. Uh, somebody said, well, if you wear braided hair, it's artificial. It's a sin. I said, okay, how about those who wear prosthetic arms, prosthetic legs? Is it also a sin? When you wear your tie, is it not artificial also? And so on. So I've addressed all of that in details. If you are interested in that, I'll suggest that you check the YouTube channel, our YouTube channel. It is Olushe Gumokulu, or you can simply just write uh, and request for the link for the video. I will tell you, um, I'll give you my number at the end of this particular episode. So you can write and request for it or you can just search it online on your own and watch that particular video because I'm not going to be dealing with that. I'm dealing specifically today about modest dressing. So the scripture says that in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest 
apparel. Now, what exactly does this mean? What exactly does this translate to? Let's look at um, other versions of the scripture. I'm going to read from two versions of the scripture, English Standard Version and New Living Translation. Now, listen to this. It says, likewise also, that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control. With modesty and self-control. It means that you cannot just wear whatever you feel like you want to wear. There won't be need for self-control if you can do whatever you like. But there's a place for self-control. If you read New Living, uh, New Living Translation, it says, And I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair. So it means that you should not draw attention to yourself. Any kind of dressing that you are wearing in order to draw attention to yourself is no longer a modest dressing. When, you know, the people of the world, their own concept of dressing is to draw attention to themselves. And you see, when we say attention to yourself, we are not, uh, we are not simply talking about just exposing yourself. You see, you can be well covered. You can be well covered from head to toe and draw attention to yourself. How do you do that? When you go and buy clothes in order to make a statement, Maybe there is an expensive cloth and some people felt you can't have it, you can't buy it, and then you buy it and wear it so that they can see. And unfortunately, people do this in church. You know, it's just, it's just the same way that somebody who has enough money and can buy a lot of gold rings and so on, at the end of the day, will put four, five, six, seven gold rings in her hand or in his hand. Why? Because he needed, he or she needed to show off that he has all of those gold. So it's no longer playing any function. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying golden ring in itself is sinful. I'm dealing with the heart. And I'm still going to share other scriptures to show this, that I'm dealing with the heart. Because that's what the scripture also dealt with. The reason why we have wayward dressing all around us today is because something is fundamentally wrong with our relationship with Jesus. Something is wrong with that heart. When you know Jesus, certain things changes for you. Even as a man, when I gave my life to Jesus, when I finally said, Lord Jesus, I really want to follow you. January 20th, 2001, when I made that decision, without anybody preaching to me, I look at my clothes. I packed several of my clothes. I said, these clothes, they are not good for a believer. I packed them. I went somewhere, I poured kerosene on them and put them on fire. That's me as a man. Nobody preached to me. Nobody told me wear this or don't wear this. I did that myself. I just felt this no longer portray me as a child of God. You know, and that's why you will see today a lot of people wearing um, torn clothes, clothes, clothes up and down. You know, you want to ask yourself, why will somebody who is normal, who is sensible, wear a cloth that is torn? As in, why will you buy such a cloth with your money and wear it? Now, please, I need you to understand one thing. I'm not dealing with clothing. For example, that torn jeans. Let's say I'm, I'm working on a farm or I'm working uh, in a me mechanical workshop and I'm wearing a jeans and it gets torn like that. I can still wear it and keep doing my work. Now, that doesn't mean I'm mad or something is wrong with me. In that context, there's nothing wrong with that clothing. F again, if, for example, you tie uh, a towel and go to your bedroom, there's nothing wrong with that clothing in that context. But if you tie a towel without a top and then you are walking in the street, then something must be wrong with you. You can go to your bed with a transparent nighty. Nothing is wrong with that. So that clothing itself, there's nothing wrong with a cloth. But if you wear that cloth outside, you wear it for a meeting, you wear it outside and everybody is looking at your, at your body and so on, then something is wrong with your heart. It is not that cloth. The same cloth that is okay in your room is not okay outside. So it's not the clothing that is the problem. It is your heart that has a problem. 
You know, I, I wonder this and I ask myself, why must, why must women wear clothes that is so tight-fitted that the only reason why you are not seeing their body is just that there is, it, the, the material of the cloth is probably not transparent. Otherwise, nothing is left to imagination. You could just see everything. Why will you buy such a cloth? Why must a cloth be so tight-fitted? You know, I had to draw a lady's attention to it. She, you know, on, on, her, on, her, on her Facebook page, she posts so many things about Jesus and so on. And then she had a picture, a profile picture. She was wearing a tight leggings that the shape of her vagina was clearly showing, as in clearly showing. You could see the V-shape and the deep between, in the middle. And there's somebody posting about Jesus, posting about the things of God. And you're just wondering, how come we don't have any sense of dressing today? Why would a child of God, why would somebody who say, I'm a child of God, put that out? If, for, if, if you look at uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 10, it says, And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an alot, and subtle of heart. Can you see that? There is always a connection between your heart and your dressing. If your heart is right, your dressing will be right. If your heart is not right, your dressing cannot be right. It cannot be right. So when you look at this scripture, it says there is an attire. There is a, there is a mode of dressing that the scripture says is, a, is the kind of dressing that prostitute wears. So he wouldn't expect his children to dress like this. And he says, a woman with the attire of an alot. It means that everybody understands how an alot dresses. What is the principle that governs the dressing of an alot? Attraction. Seduction. I want something, I want to wear something that will make men to desire to have sex with me, or to desire to be with me, or to see me, or to look at me, or to give me attention. That is how prostitute dresses. That is how an alo dresses. Now, so he's saying that there is a dressing like that, but the problem is her heart. She dresses like that because her heart is subtle. And that is what I'm praying that God will open your eyes to see today. You know, I usually tell people, I don't, have, I don't have much problem with the way anybody dresses. I say, if you want to go naked, go naked. The problem or the issue really I have is that it's an indication that something is wrong with your heart. And that's where the real problem is. Something is wrong with your relationship with Jesus. Because let me tell you the truth. If, if a lady dresses naked, if she's only wearing pants and without a bra... And then somebody preaches the gospel to her and she accepts Jesus. Her dressing has not changed, but at that moment she becomes born again. She becomes a child of God. So it's not really that clothing. But I can bet you that since she met Jesus, her dressing will change. She will no longer go out that way again. She won't dress that way any longer. So we are not dealing with clothes in itself, as in clothes are just material. But the heart of man that determined that this is what I want to wear or this is what I don't want to wear. For example, maybe there is a wristwatch that has a name. And you now, because you want people to know that you can wear that wristwatch that has that name. You do everything to have that wristwatch. You do everything to wear that wristwatch. You are not being modest. You understand why? You are wearing that to show off to men. Your dressing is no longer about yourself. It's no longer about pleasing the Lord. It's no longer about being considerate. It's just simply about showing off to others, oppressing others, trying to prove a point to others. You know, it's, it's almost like when you see, you see Christian sisters, they will take pictures of their backside and post it on their social media. And then you ask yourself, what is the rationale behind this? And then when you look at their profile, sold out to Jesus, Jesus girl, Jesus baby. I put faith in God. I believe in God. I love Jesus. You love Jesus. And then you will turn your buttocks and then take picture of it. And then you post it out. Now, what exactly are you, what gospel are you preaching? What do you want to, what do you want to achieve with that? What, what, what do you stand to gain with that? And you know, the same thing happens to brothers. 
You know, when you see when when you see the way some men would dress, you you are asking yourself, is this person a tout? Or is this person a normal, reasonable person? So you are wondering, what do you want to gain with this? And you know, it's the same thing. On, on the extreme end are those who are very dirty and those who are very rough. In fact, I made a video recently titled, Dirtiness is not holiness. Some people are also very dirty. They can't iron their clothes. They can't tidy up their dressing. That is also not right. Jesus said that you should take care of yourself. When he was talking about fasting, he talked about you looking after yourself. Where he said, he even talked about, he said, anoint your head. That means put cream on your head. Make your head good, look good. One version says, make your hair look good. Make it look good. So you need to examine yourself. You need to ask yourself, what is the principle behind your dressing? You know, I, I usually challenge young women. I'm like, if you are a believer, there has to be a difference between the way you make your clothes and the way unbelievers make their clothes. If you all wear the same thing, because there is a principle behind their clothing. I had somebody saying, well, you know, in some countries they can't get good clothing. It has to be small, small. It has to be short. I said, that's not true. Number one, that's not true. Number two, if believers in those countries insist on the kind of clothing they want, they will make it for them. It is because they don't have problems with it. I've seen women that when they sit down, they, can't, they, 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 they are struggling to close their legs because they just think that everybody is looking between their legs. Because you are wearing something so short that you can't even close your leg. Now, how can you dress like that and begin to distribute tracts? And begin to tell people that you are a child of God. How do you dress like that? How, how do you do that? It's not appropriate. Some will be, will be doing everything to cover uh, uh, their, the opening of their buttocks. Because they are wearing a top so short. And they are wearing whatever kind of skirt or trouser that does not cover that part of the body. And they are just struggling to cover it. Once you are beginning to do that, you yourself, you are already testifying that your dressing is wrong. We can see the entire shape of your breast by the kind of clothes you wear. And you profess to be a child of God. And you say, oh, oh, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to, you want to have more of Jesus. Is that how to have more of Jesus? You are, you are disgracing the kingdom of God. You are bringing shame on the name of the Lord. And you are saying you want more of him. You want more of him. Ask yourself, does this dress glorify the Lord? Does it glorify Jesus? You know, I, I, you know it amazes me that as a believer, you go to the pool. You go to pool. Then you take pictures. Or you go to the beach. You take pictures. You are wearing bikini. You are wearing shorts. Now, I don't have a problem with you swimming with bikini or swimming with any shorts. But that, because in that context, you may swim the way you want. As long as you are not exposing your body, it could be a place where um, you can swim com com comfortably without any eye prying on you. All right. But why must you snap that and put it on your social media? You know, I don't have a problem with you bathing naked in your bedroom. Nobody has any problem with that. But the problem is when you make a video. And uh, you make you take pictures of yourself beating and then you put it on social media. That is where the problem lies. Why must we see you in swimming suit? Why must we see you in swimming suit on social media? When almost all your body is revealing, is outside, and then your profile is saying, Jesus girl. What kind of Jesus girl is that? How can you be Jesus girl? If you read, let me now read further. That first Timothy, let me read it from the easy English version of the Bible. It says, as for the women, I want them also to dress themselves properly, properly. They should think carefully about the clothes which they wear. Brethren, he says, think carefully about the clothes that you wear. There was a time I posted a picture. I was wearing a jeans, a very tight jeans, and um, a very tight shirt. And I posted it on social media, on Facebook specifically. And before you know it, a lot of ladies were coming to comment there, hot, 
sweet, sexy. You know, I had to remove the picture. Because those comments does not, they don't glorify God. How can they be looking at my picture and be saying, and hot, hot. And you know, I know why they were saying that. It's not because maybe I just posted my pictures and I'm looking at some and they're just trying to praise me or psych me up. No, 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 no. The cloth passed a message across. And I looked at it also and I said, this is not appropriate. And I had to quickly take that picture down. Because of the pose of that picture, it, it brought out my masculinity, you know. And I, I just felt those comments were not right. So he says that you must think carefully. You don't just dress as a woman. You don't just wear anything as a man. You must ask yourself, are you representing Jesus? Paul said, if eating meat will make my brother to sin, I will rather not eat meat. Why did he say that? Meat is not a sin. God created the animals. They are not sinful. But he was considerate of other people. Ask yourself, what you are wearing what you are wearing, what does it say to the other person? You know, because if you read the book of Luke, Luke chapter 7 verse 1 and 2 says, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Verse 2, It were better for him that a mice stone were hanged about his neck and is cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Can you see? Jesus said, offense would come, but let it not come through you. Men would lost. Even if you cover yourself from head to toe, men would lost, but let them not lost on account of your own life. Let them not lost on account of your own life. You know, can you, can you stand on the pulpit and preach in the way you dress? There was a video that, was, that went viral some time ago of a lady that claimed to be a servant of God. And her nipple was out. She was preaching. She sat down preaching and her nipple was out. And you, you're just wondering, what, what exactly is this? Flesh is not going to give back to spirit. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. She says she wants to attract men so that they can hear the gospel. That is satanic. That is very satanic. He said you should give careful thought to what you are going to wear. If we look at that scriptures again in detail, um, it says that with, it says with propriety and moderation, then he now add what it should not be. He said, not with braided hair. Now, many people have misread this to say that he's saying they should not do braids. What he's simply saying, let me, let me put it in a way that you will understand. If I say to you, don't let your life be about money. Have I said that you should not spend money? No. Have I said you won't need money? No. What did I say? Money should not define your life. Money should not be what you are spending your life to pursue. It should not be. Money should not be. Do you know that it is so painful today that even supposed men of God, they are wearing a modern suit to preach because they want to show off. Some, they will even tell you how much they bought that suit. I am not exaggerating, brethren. I have seen it. I saw a man. He was ask, preaching and he was asking, why, dear, how much did we buy this wristwatch in Italy? How much did we buy? He said $10,000. $10,000. I watched it myself. If I had to quickly call some brethren and say, please switch on your TV to this channel. Watch this. I don't want it to be that only me saw this. I saw it. How does that glorify Jesus? Did you notice something about Christ? When they wanted to arrest Jesus, they needed somebody to betray him. Because by dressing, Jesus was not different from his disciples. By dressing. Today, by dressing, you know the, you know the Jew. You know the Papa. You know the man of God. 
just by dressing. Even by their cheers, you know them. By cheers, you know them. Examples that Christ did not leave for us. Christ who was full of grace and anointing. So he says, not with braided hair. He's not saying you should not braid your hair. He's simply saying, that should not define your life. That should not define your life. You know, and I usually say, if you spend, I've seen, when I was growing up, women would braid hair for 48 hours. They will start in the morning. They will not end by night. They will continue the following day. Okay, I don't have problem with it. But you that can spend that hour, you cannot spend 15 minutes to pray. You cannot read the Bible for 30 minutes. That it's showing your heart. That's the point. It's showing that something is wrong with your heart. He also says that not with gold or pearls or costly clothing. Can you see? Not with costly clothing. I just pray God will touch your heart that you will, you will choose simple things. I'm not saying you should buy fake things such that you will, you will put your resources in the eternal things than in temporary things. I've seen people who will say, no, 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 no. Instead of me buying a shirt that is, let's say, for example, I'm just giving this as an example, uh, a shirt that is $10,000. I'm going to buy one that is $500 so that I can have money to pour into the work of God or to pour into the things of the kingdom. Now, nobody is asking for your money. It is left for you and God to decide the kind of heart you want to display between you and your God. Everybody will be rewarded for the way they hold the kingdom at heart. It says not with costly apparel. Nobody can define costly for you because what may be costly for me, <laughs> what I may think that uh, uh, is cheap for me may even be costly for somebody. What somebody may consider cheap, I may consider it costly. So he left this at the discretion of your heart. Because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And then he says that, uh, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. You see the reason? Because you are professing godliness. You cannot dress the way people of the world, of the world dresses. Uh, uh, yes, because you have identified with Jesus. You have identified. In fact, Easy Version says that that is the pro that is the proper way for them to live because they say that they respect God. They profess devotion to God. Another version says, as women who professes referential fear for and devotion to God. Because you have devotion to God, dress in a way that glorifies him. Let me say it again. When your heart is correct, you will dress correctly. We won't need to preach to you. But as long as your heart is wrong, you, will, you won't even have a sense of dressing anymore. You won't have a proper sense of dressing. You will wear clothing that are so bad that when people challenge you, you're like, what's wrong with this? It's because something is wrong with your heart. I pray that God will speak to your heart. Remember, clothing are just materials. It is what you do with them that we are dealing with. It is not the clothing in itself. We are not preaching externalities. We are preaching exactly what the scripture teaches. Men and brethren, sisters and women, learn to dress in a way that glorifies Jesus, in a way that honor the name of Christ, in a way you can be proud when Jesus comes. In a way that all that you are seeking is just to cover your nakedness and glorify the name of the Lord. My prayer is that in your heart, you will not dress to attract people to your life. You will not dress to oppress people or to show off, but to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. My name once again is Olu Shegun Mukulu. We send this podcast out regularly, but in case you have stumbled on it or somebody has shared it with you, and you also want to be receiving it regularly on WhatsApp. All you need to do is send us a message on WhatsApp. Please don't send text message. Just message us on WhatsApp. The number is plus 234-818-615-7852. When you message us, please include your full name. For those of you who are watching this on the YouTube channel, please remember to subscribe to this channel and to share this 
message this link with other believers. The same for those who are listening on their WhatsApp. Please remember to share this with other believers uh, on your contact. My prayer is that in all that we do, whether in dressing, in eating, in praying, in sleeping, the name of Jesus Christ alone will be glorified. God bless you.